And now, it's time for Comfort Time Live. Comfort Time Live. Comfort Time Live is a call-in show where you can call in and discuss air conditioning, heating, energy savings, indoor air quality, and dealing with contractors. Comfort Time Live. And now, here's your host, your personal comfort consultant, tackling all of your home comfort issues. Here he is, live on your radio, Tom Platania. Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Comfort Time Live. I'm Tom Platania, your host. And as always, it is an absolutely beautiful day in sunny South Florida. I think we're getting up into the, what are we at? Let's look at the old iPhone temperature sensor here. Oh, it's only 82 degrees out. Uh, looks like it's supposed to have a high of 84, a low of 70. And let's see, what kind of uh, humidity do we have in here? I don't have that, but it looks like, boy, we've had some rain the past few days, huh? That's and been a good thing. That's been a good thing. We've needed that. There have been a lot of... Uh, They've been pre-starting fires here and there all up and down the road. I've seen some fires right in the middle of 95 just starting all by themselves. So this is a good thing to have. You know uh, what happens? People pull over. To watch. Or No, they pull over with their cars. And the exhaust is hot. Oh, okay. And if the grass is dry, they there drive away and they don't even know. And then a little kindling starts. So. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's what so happens. I guess the rain's really going to help that. Um, well, good. That's a good thing. Well, well, as it starts to get a little warmer... Um, temperatures like this are, are definitely the reason that we, we moved to Florida. Hopefully it doesn't get too, too much hotter, though. Um, but I don't know. The past few years, we haven't really had that many just scorchers. And we've had a lot more comfortable days. And we're going to talk about some of the reasons uh, why the temperatures being at that today. We are going should have a, a caller calling in here probably about 710. But uh, first of all, I want to say good morning to my beautiful wife. And I hope she has an absolutely wonderful day. And uh, it's a kid's weekend. So, oh, no, wait, yeah. Yeah, kid's doing, weekend. Doing something fun? The weekend after is Memorial Day, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, next weekend's Memorial right, Day. So that's right. a non-kid yes. weekend. Ah, oh, God. Memorial Day, <laughs> no kids. <laughs> Whatever will we do? Um, but, uh, yeah, we have kids, kids this weekend, so everybody's going to be hanging out, hopefully having a good time. Hopefully, if it's weather like this, it's be, it's be perfect weather to sit out on a hammock somewhere with a corona with your toes in the sand toes in the sand <laughs> it's like zach brown band says <laughs> uh but this should be a good day now comfort time live is a call-in talk show three four zero one five nine zero if you have questions comments suggestions about the show now something that has recently really been benefiting uh listeners and I, i've been talking about it for a while but for some reason recently i've had a uh, uh, I guess you would say a rash of listeners calling and asking for the service. And what that is, is it's the, the, the cover time live. I do an in-home consultation. And what I do as an independent uh, provider of knowledge, I come to your home. Let's say you've had some contractors out at your house. Let's say that you're getting ready to have some people come out to your house and you want an independent opinion of what's going on. I've had recently quite a few listeners call me, utilize this service where I come out to their home, I look at the air conditioning system, how it's set up, how it's organized, I give them recommendations, and I do a very detailed uh, pictorial report for them, kind of like almost like a home inspection, and uh, email it to them. So they can utilize that to have information in front of them when they go out to bring a contractor, air conditioning contractor in, to give them an estimate either on repairs or replacement. And uh, recently I've had quite a few folks and uh, they've actually been able to save themselves quite a bit of money. Uh, the, the fee is only $75 and I guarantee that uh, I'll save you tenfold. So if you call a company up and have them come out after you've been there and right. they've got like outrageous ideas, I mean, just completely different from what you suggested, you probably should pick up the phone and call for another estimate. Call for another, or call yeah. me. You know, I'm not perfect, mm -hmm. okay? Sometimes I do miss things. However, it shouldn't be like night and day, right? No, it shouldn't be. Right. Now, what there could be is that the contractor came in and found a different way to achieve the same end result. I'm okay with that. 
there's multiple ways to do different things. But you're going to list, you're going to go, I think this is bad, and I think this is bad, and I think this looks good, and I think, I mean, you're going to give them an idea. I mean, if if the, the list of things that you see are a problem right. are completely different from, right, from exactly. what someone else right, might Right, exactly. Say. So I take pictures, and then mm -hmm. I take the arrows, I point the arrows to the problems, and I say, okay, this should not be like this. Code says it should be like this. This is how it should be done. Um, and then the contractor is going to come in if he fi he should find the same issues and that's the most important thing that i'm trying to focus on for the homeowner is a lot of these contractors come out there and they they tunnel visioned and they don't see what's going on i try to get a very a visual of the whole entire thing overview and then based off that so this is their little home book that they can call a contractor out the contractor can give them the information they could look at what i've done and said okay well yep they're, they're really close what would you charge to do that? Because mm -hmm. opinion is going to play a little bit if, uh, into that. Well, it, yes, yes, and no. If if it's if it's broke or if it's wrong, there's, that should there's be no the black opinion. and white of it. <laughs> it's 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 not. Yeah. It's wrong. You know, and, and and the problem is is that a lot of the contractors, you know, they they don't grasp the concept of if it's wrong, if it's not right, it's wrong. Okay. Now, is it a hundred percent right? Well, if it's not right, it's wrong. So if a duck should be this big and it's this big, smaller, it's wrong. But they're afraid to make these recommendations to the homeowner because they're afraid that they're going to come across as a salesperson. Well, if you handle anything appropriately, you're not going to come across that way. You're making offers and recommendations. So that's what I do. I go out there as a third party, and so far the people have been very happy. I make recommendations on some people that I think would be acceptable to uh, – to handle the, the problems in the home, they make their own decision on who they want to go to uh, based on having that. But the nice thing is is that I'm not after a bunch of money, so I'm not making my decision off of that I want to sell them a certain type of a filter, so I want them to spend extra money, or I don't want them to buy a certain type of air conditioning system. So my decision of this needs to be fixed because, well, I'm trying to sell them this. $75 is just for my time and energy put into it. I spend about a good hour or so at home Afterwards, putting the report together, downloading the pictures, putting them on a, a, a report form, emailing it to them. I spend a good half hour plus, if not more, in the house, really evaluating everything. And so far, it's great. a professional recommendation. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. From someone who who's in the industry, has mm -hmm. the licenses, is not uh, a less than honest contractor. So, you know, it's a lot of good things, and uh, take advantage of it. And we actually have uh, a listener who. Uh, who sent me an email and I'll read you the email I will not read you the, the individual's name however uh, hello Tom I was listening to your recorded show from April 2012 on the consumer reports findings and wanted to call the show but today I am not free in the morning to do so we are looking to replace a 12 year old residential system I have received two quotes for from two companies for three different manufacturers Okay, I'll touch base on that here in just a second. Before I go and get a third quote from another AC provider, I wanted to get an independent opinion from someone in the industry on which manufacturers we should stick with and or run away from. All right. Now, a couple a couple things there that we want to touch base on. First, why do air conditioning why do air conditioning companies uh, make such a wide range of references. He said that they gave him three different manufacturers. Why? Why would we offer three different name brands? I would say price point. Possibly. But why not just give them three different price, point, price points with the same manufacturer? Why three different manufacturers? But think of it this way. If you're calling a professional into your home, for them to give you a professional recommendation on what belongs. Okay? What is the best product for my home? Not necessarily the name brand, but what's best going to solve the issues that are in my home. If I have high, high humidity in my home, what's going to fix that? Okay? What manufacturer or what product within the manufacturers is best going to solve that problem? There's only one. Now, Different manufacturers make like they make special air handlers and different air handlers do different things. They do not all do the same thing. But what happens is a lot of the contractors, they really don't know. When, when, I, when I do training for the, 
for the, the technicians and for the salespeople out in the field. I ask them, before you present that proposal to the homeowner, why did you choose that system? You, as the professional, why did you choose that system? Not one can tell me why. Now, this is during the training process. Some of the more seasoned people that have been out there, they can tell me why. I chose this system because of this, because of this, because of energy savings, because of dehumidification, because the size. What about installation? Fits. Are they, do well, they that's, install that's, differently? That's to totally separate. Okay. I'm just talking about the product okay. right now. Um, that's contractor-wise. But the product, why are we offering so many different products? If I'm a homeowner and you're, you're blasting me with all these different products, if you don't know, how am I supposed to know it's the homeowner? So now the confusion comes into play. So what do I do? Just like this listener, well, now i got to get a third quote because I'm still confused. And that's a lot of reasons why some of, the, some of these companies, larger companies, recommend getting three quotes. Yes, sometimes it's about who's going to get you the best price, but it's because there's such a confusion across the board. Well, I would be looking for a consistent answer is what I would be looking for. But obviously but, this, this yeah. listener is not getting it, but it's, yeah. it's, this is what's out there in the industry. You will constantly see proposals written by companies with three different names. There'll be a Goodman, it'll be a Train, it'll be a Lennox, it'll be a Ream, it'll be an Amana, it'll be a Grand Air. What, Do what? they differ with like warranties or maybe Typically rebates not. or Typically things like not. that? Unless you're looking at builder models, bottom of the line builder models, the uh, most air conditioning systems are the same warranties. Ten years, all parts. Okay, that's typical now. Um, some of them have to be registered online, and most of the, if, if it's a good contractor, he's going to take care of registering that product online. So you could basically say that every product's going to have a 10-year all-parts warranty. They all typically come out of the box with one-year labor, and the labor is not through the manufacturer. The labor is through the dealer. Mm -hmm. And um, so that doesn't. So that's not. That's not, not the okay. big. That's not the big difference. Um, if you have a question or comment, 340-1590, give us a call here at the studio, 340-1590. If you have a question or comment about this topic, uh, and this actually really wasn't the detail of the topic today, but I'm just kind of touching base on this because we have time. Um, so, so some things that come into play, the biggest one that comes into play, and I just ran into this this week, is will it fit in a space? Um, this certain uh, customer, they had an, uh, air can air handler over a water heater in a closet the air handler cannot be taller than the top of the closet door unless there are no components in the top portion of that door that need to be pulled out there has to be a space there because when you take off that door panel you have a heater you have a blower you have all this stuff that all that stuff has to be able to be pulled out of that air conditioning system to take it out so typically if the air conditioner the air handler is above the door frame you can't do it well, we only had 40 inches from the, the base to the top of that door frame. There was only one manufacturer that would fit, and we're work for that. We were stuck. Now, you could mix match equipment, and some there's some things out there. So you can buy this uh, Aspen air handler to go with this uh, train carrier Lennox condenser outside, but I don't, I don't recommend that. Um, I recommend sticking with the manufacturer of the things that have been confirmed. Mm -hmm. So there was only one, and it was a ream. Now, ream's not that high up on my list of products that I've seen too many problems with them over the years. They have a very weird coil. Now, they, they've tried to change away from that coil, but they used to have a W coil. It looked like a W instead of an A or a slant. And they ran into a lot of problems with that. Also, the motors that they were using... The motors didn't, don't have a lot of oomph to them, so you have to. The ductwork has to be way oversized in order to let this the freedom of this motor. Um, I would get into the terminology of it. It's static pressures. You know, an average air handler is a 0.5. This one's only a 0.2, so it, it doesn't have the gump that it needs to get up and go. So, and that's the biggest problem in the industry is ductwork is always undersized. And we're, we're constantly replacing air conditioning equipment, but we're never looking at the ductwork. And a lot of these contractors aren't recommending replacement. So, Would that type of air conditioner work better in a place where we're not constantly using our air conditioner, you know, like maybe up north where you only run the air so many months out better? of the... A motor like that... Oh, no, no, it, it doesn't matter. It's, it all doesn't. it's all talking about the size of the ductwork. Okay. Yeah, what, what that means is that 
um, it would be the difference between a grown man and a little boy. You know, that grown man, he can pull a lot. The little boy can only pull so much. Okay. That basic concept. It doesn't matter what environment you put him in. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. He's only, you know, it's so. Work, the workload is the right, same. So like the carrier, the trains, and the Lennox, their motors are a little bit more robust. So they can handle a little bit smaller duct work. It doesn't mean it shouldn't still be looked at. And it's a 0 0.5 st internal static pressure versus a 0 0.2. So what happens is you find you have a lot of issues with those air handlers. And I've come across it quite a bit, and we've, we've increased the size of the air handler, of the ductwork, and the problem was solved with the ream. Um, so, but I have no choice. Now, because this was an open return, so there was no ductwork restriction, I didn't really have to worry about it. I'm just not that crazy about it. They're a huge product because they were gigantic in the new construction industry when there was a boom. And why? Because they would sell to anybody. If you had a pulse and a truck to put it in, you know, you go down to West Palm after 5 o'clock and you pull up to the back of the distributors, they're unloading stuff day and night. I mean, just, it's crazy. Well, that's And, yeah, and you figure they would probably make a deal with a builder who's going to yeah. kick out, you know, hundreds of houses. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, some of the other names, they have a little bit more, you know, you know, th th there's a little bit more th they desire in order for these people to install their product. So um, so th there is no one. But l let's take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll touch base on this just a little bit more. But the big topic that I want to talk about today is some of the electrical codes that we have out there and the changes with the electric heaters that we have now and why that's going to make a big deal for homeowners with wire size. You're listening to Comfort Time Live. I'm Tom Platania. 340-1590 is the number to call. We'll be right back. Tired of struggling to find the right air conditioning contractor? Heard those horror stories about people being scammed out of thousands of dollars? Well, Comfort Time Live has found a great air conditioning contractor that they approve and you can trust. Ranger Air Conditioning Service. Ranger has been in business on the Treasure Coast for more than 38 years, providing the best in quality and customer service. Ranger Air Conditioning Service is family owned and operated by Tom Ranger. He and his highly trained staff and team members are waiting to earn your business. So give Ranger Air Conditioning Service a call at 772-546-7777. That's Ranger Air Conditioning Service at 772-546-7777 and recommended by Comfort Time Live. Don't forget to tell them you heard about them here on WPSL 1590 and receive a special discount. $3.2 billion per year are stolen from unsuspecting homeowners who lack the proper education to deal with home contractors. Hi, I'm Tom Plotania with Comfort Time Live, heard every Friday morning at 11.05. Comfort Time Live is an independent call-in talk show focused on educating homeowners to protect themselves from unlicensed contractors as well as less than honest contractors. Go to ComfortTimeLive.com to see all our recorded shows, watch us live, or view tons of information to protect and educate yourself. That's Comfort Time Live every Friday morning at 11.05 here on WPSL. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Comfort Time Live. I'm Tom Platania, your host. Again, 340-1590, the number to call if you have questions, comments, suggestions about the show topic today. So just to finish up real quick, what we were talking about was the email from our listener about the, all the different manufacturers and equipment. So the number one thing that, that you're, the contractor that comes into your home, no matter what he's offering, whether it's plumbing, air conditioning, electric, this one specifically was air conditioning, is they have to examine your home, find what issues are going on in your home. Even though you do not realize that there's an issue or you have assumed that over the years that that is acceptable. Why? Well, because that room's on the west side. It should be hotter. Well, no, it shouldn't. If the air conditioning system is designed properly and the ductwork is designed properly, every room in the house should be within a degree or so of each other. So as, as, a, as a, a professional coming into your home, I need to look and find these things. I need to ask you questions. I need to get those answers. And then I need to choose the system that best solves your needs. Not my job to determine what your pocketbook, how big it is or how small it is. That's your job as a homeowner to say, Tom, here is my range. 
what you have that will best solve my problems with the amount that I can afford to invest. That's how things should work. But what happens is, is we go out as uh, these, these service technicians or these very new uh, consultants, they go out, they don't even know why they offered that system. They just did it because, well, that's what they've been taught to do. So they throw three products out there. They throw this product out there because it's the cheapest. They throw this product out there because it's got a nice little mid-price range. Then they throw this other high-efficiency one out there. So the question I ask people every time, these consultants, is if you cannot answer your own question, why did I recommend that specific product, then don't offer it to your customer. Because if you can't answer it, how the heck is he supposed to? Okay? So... But to that listener, uh, if they are listening now, which he said he couldn't call on, obviously, but later on, if he listens to the pre-recorded show, um, that's the direction to take. But I'd be more than welcome to talk to you about that. Okay, 340-1590 is the number to call here at the studio. If you have a question or comment, comforttimelive.com is also the place to go. Uh, I'm hoping, you know, hope is not a strategy, but the website company who's redoing the website, I was really expecting to get the uh, final uh, the final thing back to me today for my approval so that we could go live next week. And I tell you, it's going to be really, it's really sharp. New logo for Comfort Time Live, a whole new look. So uh, really excited about that. But ComfortTimeLive.com is the place to go. You can watch live in the studio. You can listen to all the archives. Um, you can listen to us while we're doing the show live. There's a chat room, all kinds of information that you can find. And with this new website company, they're going to help me really add a lot more information for you there so here here's the issue we've been running into we actually came across this issue uh, we came across this issue this week with a homeowner uh, who we thought she might call in today but that's okay but hopefully she's still listening well what happens is a lot of these homes have heat pumps well What's a heat pump versus a straight cool? Well, let's answer that question in just a second. It sounds like we have a caller on line one. Steve, good morning, and welcome to Comfort Time Live. Good morning. How are we doing? I, a, I got a quick question that's uh, not on the subject we talked about today. That's all right. It's always uh, open for discussion. My son has an, or lives in an old uh, double-wide mobile home. Okay. Actually, the mobile home's not so old, but the AC is. All right. Can you put a uh, thermostat and, a, and, and adjust the humidity? On uh, package units, old ones. You, the humidity is not going to adjust individually. Now, are you talking about a humidistat? Well, I, I have one that's uh, the, it's all in one. It's programmable. It takes care of the humidity and the uh, temperature, all in one unit. But yeah, what what will happen is is that the, that type of device on a package unit only specific systems does that all-in-one thermostat truly work and you have to in order for it to really work well the all-in-one you'd have to have a variable speed air handler and perhaps a two-stage system and that's probably not going to happen at all you know not in a package unit like that no not in, in fact very unless you spent uh like the next 20 years worth of your your uh, income you can get a really good air conditioning package unit that has stuff like that but they're just absolutely outrageously priced um, but what what it will do is, if you had a humidistat, is it would just it would turn the air conditioning system on and it would run the air conditioner to try to get the humidity down to whatever you set it. So let's say we set it at 50% relative humidity, and we wanted it 76 degrees in the house. What it'll do is the thermostat will continue to run that air conditioner to get it down to 50% humidity, disregarding the temperature. Now. The lucky thing is, is that the thermostats have a lockout on them, which says that it will not go over three degrees plus or minus in order to achieve that humidity. So if it's set at 76, it will not let the temperature go down below 73 without getting to 50% humidity, or it'll shut the air conditioner off no matter what. But you can set it higher. Yes. And the lower humidity is going to keep the place cooler. Correct. 50% is where you should be at. I would never keep it over 60% because that's where mold, mildew, and, and problems really start to occur. Now, typically, if you're running the air conditioner at 70, 70, or should be 76, 77, somewhere in there, you're never going to find it where it gets over 60% humidity in the house. And if it does, you got problems. You probably have duct leaks or something. And, you, and that can be added? 
to, yeah, if he's an got additional a, instrument to the thermostat. Yeah, if he's got if he's got a thermostat now. Now the only reason I would add anything is if he was to leave the house for periods of time. He does. He works. He's on three and off too. Okay. Then what I would do is, uh, well, does he come home or is he gone the whole time? No, he's uh, he's uh, he's like a, he's in the coast guard. Okay, so he's uh, actually gone three for three days. Okay. And then off two, and then and then. Okay. Work two and off three. So what he would get is just a regular dehumidistat. Um, they get it, they put it on the roll. It looks like the size of a cigarette box. It's got a little round dial on the front. Okay. If if it's wired, if they wire it properly, which should be in um, in parallel, either the therm either the thermostat or the humidistat would turn the system on. Um, if you do it in series then both of them have to be calling in order to turn it on and that's your preference um, and what it would mount to the wall what he would do is set it at 60 percent when he leaves turn the thermostat up to 85 degrees and then only if the temperature got above 85 degrees or the humidity got above 60 percent would the air conditioner turn on because why he's not there? Save quite a bit of energy, I would say. It would save it because uh, it would save it, but it would also help. You know, you could turn it up to 85 degrees and leave the house. But what if the humidity gets up into 70, 80 percent before the house gets above 85 degrees? Well, then you come problems with mold and mildew in the house, and it smells real musty when you come back. So yeah, what he's been doing is just leaving it at 80 degrees when he leaves. Yeah, um, you know and. Usually we use that for folks who go up north for six months. You know, uh, I, on, honestly, I would probably say that. I mean, they don't cost that much. That you can get them, you can get them installed for you know less than one hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, but uh, you give it a shot, and then if he does go along for away for long periods of time, but the biggest thing you're concerned about when you're not home is not temperature; it's humidity. Right. Um, so that humidist, that dehumidist, that what it's going to do is it's going to say, hey, if I get above sixty percent, I want you to turn on now. Depending on what the humidity level is in the house, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be an energy saver. Because there may be a lot of humidity in that home. Right. So but it may stay on to keep the humidity down, exactly. right? Exactly. That is correct. So, you know, it might be a recommendation. That's a good question, though. Okay. Good appreciate question. It. Hey, thanks for listening. I appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. Um, all right. So, so we're talking about on heaters. Now, a lot of folks have heat pumps or they're thinking about heat pumps. Typically, when a heat pump, and, and let me explain what a heat pump air conditioner is real quick a heat pump is an air conditioning system that the outside component if it's a split system meaning there's an air handler inside and a condensing unit outside now the package unit that steve was talking about that's mainly for your mobile manufactured homes mobile homes you can get those in heat pump but everything's still outside but what it does is it reverses the process of air conditioning Air conditioning's job is to take heat from inside the house and dump it outside by means of convection and conduction. That's what the refrigerant does. Refrigerant is like blood. It goes through the copper lines, which are like our veins. The condensing unit outside has the compressor in it, which is like our heart. And what it does is it just continually pumps that through. It absorbs the heat from the house, goes outside, and dumps it outside. A heat pump does the opposite. It takes heat from outside. Even though it's 40 degrees outside, there's still heat. There's still heat in the air until you get down to absolute zero. It's just not quite as much. So it takes heat from outside and it dumps it inside to heat your home. It's very, very efficient to heat your home. However, when you have that kind of system, you are not required to have a large amount of electric heat. You don't need it. So what they typically do is would install a much smaller heater. And electric heaters look like a toaster, giant toaster. And you have different sizes. You have a 5, you have an 8. Some people have 7.5s, but you have a 5, an 8, and a 10 kW kilowatt heater. So if I have a heat pump, I don't necessarily need larger heater to heat the house. So what they do is they would put a 5 kW electric heater in. Because what happens is when we get below 40 degrees, sometimes the heat pump will go into a defrost mode because the coil outside, because it gets so cold, is it'll, it'll start to freeze up outside. So what it does is it actually turns around, goes back into the air conditioning mode so that the coil outside gets hot, melts the stuff off, and then boom, goes back into the heating mode again. So for those few moments, the electric heat inside turns on, 
to help continually keep the house warm so that you really don't notice much of a difference. So there's not a lot of heat needed. Well, that 5 kW heater only required a certain size electrical wire. And we'll call it a 10 AWG, which uh, stands for um, the uh, American Wire Gauge. And it's just a, a standardized sizing. Well, the 10 wire, the 10 AWG, is only good for 30 amps. A 5 kW heater draws about 30 amps, according to the manufacturers. Well, now that a lot of this information is having to be turned into building inspectors for their inspections, they're really being hardcore on these numbers. It's always been... Well, you don't want to burn the house down. Uh, no, and that's what it's there <laughs> exactly. for. So, because the, 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 the breaker is not there to protect the load. The breaker is there to protect the wire size. But we, we you size the breaker for the load and also for the wire size. And so now what's happened is we go to the heat pump and we have to look at the size of the wire. And the wire is going to determine how big of a heater we can put in. And then we attach a breaker to it as well. Well, what happens is the next wire size up is an 8 AWG wire, which is capable of 40 amps. Well, the electric heaters by the manufacturers have now increased slightly in their amperage required to just above 40 amps. Well, now that means an 8 kW heater, which we used to all day long put on an 8 wire for somebody who wanted a little bit more heat can no longer be put on an 8 wire. So now they would, if, if for anybody who has an 8 wire or a 10 wire, the biggest heater you can put on is a 5 kW, which means that if you have a much bigger home, that 5, 5 kW heat, if you went from a heat pump, because the heat pumps are more expensive up front, they're anywhere between four to $600, depending on the tonnage and the manufacturer. So a consumer has to ask themselves the question, if I'm going to spend $600 up front for a heat pump because I use my heat, and I'll, I'll, I'll make a reference point as to why, when you should make a determination of getting a heat pump versus a straight cool. But if you're going to make that determination, you have to look at your electrical wire size because if I say, well, I, I don't think I want to spend the extra $600 on a heat pump. You know, I'll probably just turn my turn my heat on when it gets a little nippy out, maybe put on a sweater or something. Well, you also have to look at your wire size and say, okay, well, the biggest heater I can put in right now is a 5 kW heater, and I got a 2,000 square foot house. That ain't going to cut it. You're still going to be chilly. Or what's going to happen is that electric heater is going to have to run forever to keep the house uh, warm. Now, when you have your AC unit replaced, are they going to tell you this? If they're doing their job right. Or are now, you just going to find out when it gets cold? If they don't do their job properly, mm -hmm. which, you know, this came up because there was a mistake made. We would have caught it when we went to do the installation. The contractor would have caught it when they went to do the installation. But then we would have had to make the, we, the, the decision would have had to been made under duress. And I don't like that because then the, 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 the customer would have felt like they were being. But it was an honest mistake that, you know, just forgot to look at the wire size. Mm -hmm. So. What's going to happen, though, is there's a lot of these guys that go out there and do not look at the wire sizes. So, but they also will just say, oh, we got a heat pump, so we're going to go back with a heat pump. And once again, this is the thing I say where you've got to ask the homeowner the questions. Because if their wire size is big enough for the right size heater, and they hardly ever use their heat, it doesn't matter where they live, they don't really need a heat pump because you're not going to pay yourself back in the 10 years plus years. So... This is what we ended up on this one, is that we were considering for the cost to not go back with the heat pump. Well, the right answers weren't asked of the homeowner to get that information as well. But what we found out is that in order to go away from the heat pump and put electric heat in the house, we would have had to increase the size of the heater that was there. But we didn't have the right wire size. So it would have cost the homeowner almost as much to increase the wire size with a licensed electrician as it was just to go back to a heat pump. And then based on asking the right questions from the homeowner, finds out that even at 80 degrees outside, her husband was still chilly. Well, wait a minute. If it's 80 degrees outside and he's still chilly in the house, 
He's probably somebody who likes heat. As a wife, I'd go get a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a blanket, honey. <laughs> Usually it's the opposite <laughs> way. But uh, uh, So asking the right questions. Now, here, here's the thing. Now you have the 10 kW heater that goes up to 55 or 60 amps. So it's wire size that has to be looked at. And now that these building inspectors are asking for all the manufacturer's documentation, that's where this thing is starting to blow up because before they weren't really asking for it. This almost feels like it puts you between a rock and a hard it place. It does. It, it, really, yeah. it really does. Now, what it Because that wire is going to determine how much regular heat you can, you can put in. That's exactly And will that be enough then Correct. for the house? So what now, there is a lot of homes. I come across homes all day long that have eight wire in them. And they have eight kW heaters on them. Some of them have eight wire with 10 kW heaters, which is wrong to begin with, but it's still there. But ev all of these people that have an eight wire, and if you look at the wire, for you folks who like to tinker around, if you open up the panels, I don't recommend doing this, but you open up the panels, it'll say 8-2 on it. Or 8 dash typically say 8-2 on it. Or it'd be a 6-2. Right in your panel? You'll be able right to see this wire, without... Right on the okay, wire. Right on the wire. That comes into look at the, the wire that comes in. And um, and you'll be able to tell that. But if it's but then eight, how do you know what type of heater you have? It was you, it ha, it, by code. It's supposed to be written on the air conditioner. Okay. By code, they're supposed to document it on it. Eight okay. kW, ten kW, uh, five kW. Well, if you have an eight kW heater, and you only have an eight wire, it's going to be against code when you go to replace the new system. You will only be able to put a five kW heater in by code. In order to match so that so what's if you already have that in your house what's happening when you turn the heater on what well, are you is you're pulling a, a load on that wire it, or? but it's not the old heaters it's the new heaters okay it's the new heaters that's causing the problems before it wasn't that big of an issue but because we have new heaters that are using a little bit more electricity on them plus the, the building inspectors are calling for the manufacturer specs the specs are getting to where now uh, this one manufacturer we're looking at for a and this is actually a train the heater draws minimum ampacity they require is 44 amps and maximum is 45 well neither of those are going to work on an eight wire because 40 amps is the biggest you can go so 340-1590 is the number to give us a call here at the studio if you have a question or comment you know what is a heat pump or some maybe even if it's off topic like what steve called us at today that's not a problem you give us a call here and we'll answer it. Remember, ComfortTimeLive.com is the place to go to find information like this. Hopefully, we'll have it uh, updated by the end of next week where you'll be able to see the new look and style and and uh, all kinds of stuff. I'm excited. I just really can't wait to get it going because I've been racking my brains trying to put this thing together for years. And I've tried all different designs and just try to make things you know ergonomically look better. And But uh, you know, I just decided it was time that if I wanted to get the right information out there and make it look good too it's probably time to hire a professional kind of like when you're doing construction on your home you may think you're a handyman you may think that you know what you're doing but it was kind of joking around i i was uh interviewing someone for potentially a co-host position here on the show and uh it was kind of funny that she was mentioning that that her boyfriend or excuse me her ex-husband was the handyman and she goes, what if we, you know, actually came across where, you know, how would you tell your husband or spouse that you didn't trust him to do something when you know his ego is just going to be beat up bad? Just <laughs> say it. <laughs> but, Worry about that later. You know, <laughs> you know, even me, as much as I know about the about the business, you know, there's certain things that I've tried. And after I've gotten halfway into it, I said, you know what? You should have swallowed your ego to begin with and done it right. I'm very visual. I can't go. Women have, are. You're, you're vi very visual. My wife said that men are visual. Women are not. I can get things explained to me, and I go, mm, no, I don't get it. I need to see it. Okay. And and I'm always very worried about what's it going to look like when you're done. All right. So you're, are you sure you can do this? It's going to look the way I want it when you're done. <laughs> now, you're really sure you can do this? <laughs> That's Dowdy. how you handle the boyfriend or the husband, and you're Dowdy. not sure. You go, are you sure you can do this? Well, a lot and of it's going to look the way I want it to look when it's done. Uh, no, it's never going to look that way, no matter what. But all of this stuff should also make sure that you get a, a, a licensed electrician to come in there if any of this work needs to be done. But we're going to take another quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk a little bit more about these codes, talk about why you should go with a heat pump versus a straight cool system. 
And uh, you can also give me a call, and uh, Comfort Time Live can come out to your house and do one of your home consulting inspections for you, uh, no problem. CoverTimeLive.com is the place to go, 340-1590. We'll be right back. $3.2 billion per year are stolen from unsuspecting homeowners who lack the proper education to deal with home contractors. Hi, I'm Tom Platania with Comfort Time Live, heard every Friday morning at 11.05. Comfort Time Live is an independent call-in talk show focused on educating homeowners to protect themselves from unlicensed contractors as well as less than honest contractors. Go to ComfortTimeLive.com to see all our recorded shows, watch us live, or view tons of information to protect and educate yourself. That's Comfort Time Live every Friday morning at 11.05 here on WPSL. Tired of struggling to find the right air conditioning contractor? Heard those horror stories about people being scammed out of thousands of dollars? Well, Comfort Time Live has found a great air conditioning contractor that they approve and you can trust. Ranger Air Conditioning Service. Ranger has been in business on the Treasure Coast for more than 38 years, providing the best in quality and customer service. Ranger Air Conditioning Service is family owned and operated by Tom Ranger. He and his highly trained staff and team members are waiting to earn your business. So give Ranger Air Conditioning Service a call at 772-546-7777. That's Ranger Air Conditioning Service at 772-546-7777 and recommended by Comfort Time Live. Don't forget to tell them you heard about them here on WPSL 1590 and receive a special discount. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Comfort Time Live on this beautiful Friday. What are we looking at? The 18th. Today's the 18th. Boy, I just predated a check. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Oops. I guess it's better than post-dating, right? <laughs> I was still thinking it was the 17th. So what's the topic of the day? 340-1590. Questions, comments, suggestions. Uh, remember, Comfort Time Live will come out to your home and give you an independent uh, inspection of your heating and air conditioning system. I will also uh, take a look at some of these electrical issues. However, you need a licensed electrician to make the repairs on any of the electrical stuff. But it's very easy for someone to come out and just look at the wire size to determine if it's the right size and give you your options. I have a question for you on that. Yes. What if you had in what the if past... I don't want to answer it? Well, it's your show. <laughs> in the past year or two, you've had a new system put in. Yes. And now you're wondering, I mean, you're talking about the heaters, which right. we don't use very often. And right. you you did go from a, I want to call it a swamp cooler. What is it? The, the heat pump? Heat pump. <laughs> you go from heat pump to straight, straight cool. cool. Okay. And you don't know what kind of heater you have. You don't know what kind of wire you have. What if you come in and take a look at it and it's wrong? Is there any recourse? I mean, it's only a year old system or maybe even less. Well, recourse to the, to the to contractor. Now, if a permit was pulled... I would hope that the inspector caught it. Okay. And uh, if it's only a year old, I would say that it probably would have gotten caught if a permit was pulled because okay. the inspectors are getting very detailed on that um, because of the changes. So your only recourse is, is to go back to the contractor. But, you know. But it, you could, then you could go, hey, this isn't a code. Right. Why do we do this? Right. Why, why didn't you change this? Why did you mm -hmm. install this to code? So. Um, they definitely have the recourse to go back, and it's just a matter of how good that contractor is of whether they're going to make the change or not. And uh, also, that what they need to do is, is find somebody to get them the manufacturer specs, which they could probably pull them up right online. They just get the model number to the heater that's in the air conditioning system, and it, they can pull it up, and it'll tell them, or just call the manufacturer, if it's train or carrier or Lennox, and say, I got, here's my model number or serial number of this heater. Can you tell me how many amps it draws? And it's very simple. 10 wire is 30 amps, 8 wire is 40 amps, and 6 wire is 55 to 60. I'm actually looking at, a, at a, a, the actual wire size chart, the official wire size chart. And it actually says that 6 wire is only good for 55 amps. And we've always been, in the industry, it's always been... 6 wire 60 amps but I'm actually looking at the official wire size and depending on the type of insulation that's on the wire it gives you three different ratings 60 75 and 90 degrees Celsius type insulation 
um, would allow you to determine what size, how much amperage. But it says here on this, it's only 55 amps. So uh, most of your 10 kW heaters will draw pretty close to that. But that's the only recourse is you go back to the contractor. But I would I would have them educate themselves first because I guarantee it they're going to call the contractor and the contractor's going to say, oh, no, it's fine. But if they have... Well, their, I'd hate to burn the house down. Exactly. But if they have their documentation and say, listen, I've gotten documentation. I know that eight wire is only good for 40. And that's where they're going to run into the problem is it's going to be, it's going to be an eight wire and an AKW heater or something. I, I've done my documentation. This heater draws 43 amps. That's the minimum protection. And the wire is only good for 40 amps. Why did you install it without replacing it? And then you have the recourse to say, I want it done. Now, if they pulled the permit and the inspector missed it, shame on him. But if the contractor refuses to make the change, they can just call the local municipality and say, hey, well, first off, a permit wasn't pulled on this and I didn't realize it. Or number two, it was pulled on it, but both the contractor and the inspector missed that my wire size is too small for the heater. But they got to have their documentation first um, to do that. So, uh, but, you know, that's something that, you know, I'll be more than willing to come out there and help you take a look at and uh, provide you with an independent. This way it's not, well, yeah, yeah, it's fine just because I don't want to spend the money to come out there and replace the heater for you. And Well, I'd hate to have it be, you know, drawing too much electric. And, of course, you had like a mild winter and you barely used it. And then you have that cold winter and, it's only for and you run it a lot. It's more for spiking is what the safety protection is. The AKW heater is not going to always run at 40 amps. What it's going to run, I mean, here's a, a for instance, um, on an AKW heater, it says the heater amps per circuit is 32. So when it's running at normal expected, it's going to run at about 32, 38 uh, amps. So in reality, 40 amps is fine, okay, if that's what they have. However, the manufacturers, now that they're, the ratings are coming out and all these things, it specifically says for 240 volt system, okay, versus 208. Now most of these new homes and whatnot are 240 volt uh, things. That it says minimum circuit ampacity is 44, maximum overload protection is 45. So they're giving that little bit of leeway in case you have some spikes in power and whatnot. They're giving that little leeway there for that. So uh, 340-1590, the number to call here if you have questions, comments, suggestions. And looks like we have on line one, we have Phil. Good. It's still morning. It's not 12 o'clock yet. Phil, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm awesome, Phil. How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing good. I just listened to your program there. I uh, just want to let you know uh, you don't actually have to have any heat. Uh, it's, I haven't for 27 years. I've got heat pop. Okay. And uh, with no electric heat strip in it. And uh, I've got three heat pumps on the house. It's a 4,000 foot home. And uh, uh, I've never had a problem. You know, it may get down to 70 when we really, really have a bad time. But, uh, right. That's uh, never had a problem at all with it. Uh, well, never even thought about putting heat strip in. Well, I, I respect your comment. Uh, however, the proper thing to do is to have an electric heater because when the, when the heat pumps go into defrost mode, and you probably know what that is when you hear the units outside go swish real loud, um, there is no heat at all being circulated through the house when that unit goes into the heat pump, when it goes into defrost. Now, perhaps you're not noticing it because you have three systems and they're probably not all going into defrost mode at the same time. So you may have two heating the house while the other one's in defrost mode. Well, they're, they're all different zones. I mean, one's upstairs. And one's right. But, and that's what I mean. That two of them may be running. So let's say the upstairs one goes into defrost mode. That unit itself is actually going to be blowing air conditioning while it's in the defrost mode. And, and that's where the importance of having that little electric heater in there, not a big one, but a small one, just well, to keep I, heat going. I've now, been in 27 years, and for the last five, it's just been me and a wife just using the one. Right. Because it's broke off. Uh, well, we never, never, never had a problem. Never know. Well, I, I respect so. that, Phil, but just because something it's has been better. okay doesn't mean it's done right. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've seen a lot of people get away with a lot of things for a long right. period of time, but just because it's been that way doesn't mean it's right. And the right, right way. I mean, if, it, if your house stays warm, uh, why would you want to? 
it's, it's very efficient that way. Right. You know what? If And if it's been doing good for you, then you're more than welcome to leave it because it's your house. But right. what I talk okay. about on the show is doing things the right way. And just because it was done in your house that way doesn't mean it wasn't the right way. Well, I'm a contractor. I built it. But, uh, I okay. did have a good AC guy. All right. But then I replaced, replaced them uh, just last year. And uh, put well, the same thing back in. Well, I've if got it, war. I ran, I ran six, six page war all the way okay. through all the units in case okay. I ever had to. Uh, all right. And for you, you, you don't have to. What size are the air conditioners? Well, I've got a, I've got a three ton and two two ton. Okay, so you would be, you would be, you'd put five k. Even though the wire is six wire, you don't need anything bigger than a five kW heater with the heat pumps. But right. you know, like I said, you have all three systems, so you may not have noticed it. But if you have a house that's got a single air uh, heat pump system, and let's say that unit has to turn off for a longer period of time because it's got a defrost for a longer period of time. That house is going to be in the cooling mode because that's what the heat pump does. It turns around, it goes into cooling mode to defrost the system. So now that they're going to have cold air blowing out of the vents or they're going to have no heat at all. So even though you're fine with it in your house, it's just it's not the right thing to do. I don't care what anybody says. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I, I mean, I appreciate your call. And, you know, that's the great thing about this show is we can agree, we can agree to disagree. Right. But but the right thing is if we're doing things. By if you call any manufacturer up and you ask them the proper way to install a heat pump, any air conditioning manufacturer is going to tell you that you, should, you need to install the heater in there. Um, because what happens if the air conditioner, if the heat pump breaks down outside? Reversing valves break down all the time. Well, now you get a little bit of backup heat as well. But uh, but I appreciate your call, Phil. Okay, well, uh, everybody to their own. Absolutely, and that's what's that's okay. the great thing about the free country. All right, Phil, have a great day. Thanks for calling. Please call again with questions and comments like that. Um, so uh, oh, we got a couple minutes left here on the show. So um, so make sure you double check that wire size. Now, you can have a smaller heater on a larger uh, wire size. That's not a problem as long as the breaker itself is proper. So once again, you know, 30 amp uh, breaker for a 5kW heater, 40 amp breaker uh well 45 amp breaker for the 8 kW heater but you got to have that on a 6 wire and then a 60 amp breaker on a 6 wire for the 10 kW heater so real quick before we go what you want to consider whether you want a heat pump or not are you the kind of person that when it gets cold outside that you put a sweater on some sweatpants and you're okay and then until it gets down really cold or are you the type of person like myself that no matter what the temperature is out i want to be in a pair of shorts and a t-shirt if that's how you are, you need a heat pump. If you, No matter what the temperature is outside, you're in a pair of shorts and a t-shirt, you need a heat pump because that means you're going to use a lot of heat in that house and the electric heater is going to cost you a lot of money. Okay? If you're the kind of person that maybe, maybe puts the thermostat at 65, 67, 68 or something like that, maybe you put on a sweater, maybe you just turn it on for a few minutes to take the nip off the air, you probably don't need a heat pump. Now, of course, there's more questions and more things we'd look at. Um, but but also determining whether you need a heat pump or not would also depend on that wire size you know so if it's going to cost you four hundred and fifty dollars extra to get a heat pump and it's going to cost you six hundred dollars to replace that electrical wire to upgrade it well you'd probably be better off going with a heat pump because you're not only going to save money on that you're going to save money on the other stuff so but covertimelive.com you can always get this information and you know what just like opinions but if you're not sure look at the local building codes Call the local municipalities, call your manufacturers, because they're going to give you not opinion. They're going to give you fact. Thanks for listening to the show today, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget, next Friday at 11.05, we'll be here live. Have a great weekend.